Well, thank you guys for coming today. Um, you guys having a good conference? So, getting some networking going. So, well, my name's Jim Waldron. Um, I'm from IHS in Denver, Colorado. Uh, what IHS does essentially is uh, we're an uh, information uh, data company. We serve up data for all types of industries. We do uh, maritime, defense, um, engineering, oil and well data. Uh, we serve up all that data and really essentially offer that up to our customers for uh, subscription services. So, give you a little bit about my career. Um, I've been in the IT field a little over 25 years now and I've always kind of considered myself a smoke jumper. Um, it's uh, kind of a career that found me. I didn't really find it. Um, 25 years ago, I, I got my degree in history from University of Nebraska. Um, didn't really have a career path set at that point. Kind of find a hard to, you know, find a job. Essentially, I, my dad made me promise him I wouldn't be a teacher. He was a teacher, um, and when he passed, I was 15 or 16 years old, and made me promise him one thing, and that's that I'd never be a teacher. So, <laughs> um, so I didn't go that route. Um, went out to California for a couple years, worked in a grocery store, and then uh, settled back in Denver. Um, while I was in Denver, uh, I went back to school for one semester. Kind of threw a dart at a uh, job board, um, and it landed on an IT job. So um, I started off with a small company called PAI in Golden, um, and they were an uh, environmental tracking software company. They tracked uh, pollution out of smokestacks. Um, the first week that I was there, the other IT guy that was there quit, and then my manager quit two weeks later, and all of a sudden I was the IT guy. So um, a little baptism by fire, so to speak. Um, so it was kind of crazy. Um, I really uh, enjoy what I do. I can't think of uh, any other job that I'd rather do than doing what I'm doing right now, which is I'm the uh, principal uh, global application support engineer for IHS. Um, and uh, it's, it's been a pretty wild ride over those 25 years. So uh, troubleshooting is something that uh, I've always kind of had a knack for. I don't know, I used to pull things apart when I was a kid. My dad would be like, oh my God, you know, why is the TV all over the, the living room floor? Because um, it was broken, you know. Put it back together, fix it, those kind of things. Um, so the smoke jumping reference kind of comes through because over the past 25 years, I, I've been at a bunch of companies from five people companies to Fortune 500 companies. Um, and really what I've done is they kind of hire me, they've got a problem going on, come in, jump in, fix the issue, and I kind of got out. Um, it's not really the case at IHS now. I think I've found my home. Um, after 25 years, it's probably gonna be the last place that I work. So it's a, it's a great uh, organization to work for. Kind of give you a little bit about IHS, but that's kind of the breakdown of what we do. Like I said, we're a data company. Um, it's what we do. We serve up data for all sorts of industries. These are just a few. Um, Maritime's up there, because that's kind of generally one of our new ones. Um, we serve up, we essentially, for the maritime one, we track uh, any shipment that you may have, any package that you may have bought. Uh, a lot of it comes over from Hong Kong or whatever, comes over on ships. Um, it's pretty much so we take those, uh, uh, we ping off those uh, GPS coordinates and actually track those ships, where they're at, what they're doing, um, and where they're at at that time. But we've got, Big customers like Boeing and uh, Mark Marietta. Uh, big oil companies actually get their uh, well and oil drilling data from us. Um, so it's essentially we serve up a lot of data. Our customers, it's, it's, uh, we're mostly going towards subs subscription-based services right now. So it was kind of interesting to watch the uh, presentation this morning to see how everybody's kind of going digital. Um, we used to do microfish, served everything up on that. We used to send out CD-ROMs, all that kind of stuff, and we don't really do that anymore. We're going more to subscription-based services. So our customers uh, essentially sign up for any one of our offerings, uh, electronics and chemicals, things like that, and by what they purchase uh, entitlements-wise is what they get to see. So we're out of the packaging stuff up business and serving stuff up on Microfish now to all digital subscription services. So, um, I kind of wanted to follow the smoke jumper theme. 
Uh, essentially what we're doing right now is trying to get to more of a DevOps horizontal structure. Um, when I first got to uh, IHS, there were a few smoke jumpers there and there wasn't really a whole team to put together to firefight issues. Um, our, primary, uh, our primary function in the app support group was to uh, essentially take calls from the IOC, our International Operations Center, and we'd have an outage, they'd give us a call, we just need it fixed, we need it fixed now. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of problem resolution going on there, we didn't really have any tools to dig into code or anything like that. And it, really there were two kind of mantras between the two teams, between Dev and Ops. Uh, Dev was more interested in functionality and um, enhancing features for our customer. And on the app support side, we would go ahead and fix the issue. Um, but the key thing was is the resolution part of it. We never had a real true plan to go through and resolve the issue. Um, so we'd fix issues that reoccurred once, twice, three times a week, sometimes daily, um, but never really got a chance to go back to development and ask them uh, you know, to work with us to try to figure out what the issue is and fix the problem. Um, it was essentially just fix it and let's move on. Um, also, when I first got there, um, it was uh, the relationship between develop development and app support was a little bit strained. Um, there were some trust issues. Um, development didn't really trust the app support guys. Uh, history kind of dictated that. Um, it was a strange situation to kind of drop into. I really hadn't experienced that in some of the other companies I'd worked for. Um, so development kind of did their own thing. App support kind of supported them in just fixing problems or not fixing problems, resolving outages. So had to, when I dropped into the Inglewood team in Denver, um, uh, you had to develop that relationship. I had to get with the developers um, when we were having issues and try to get some information out of them. Um, and the information that we usually got was, uh, you know, we'd spend a couple of hours, a couple of days, sometimes trying to resolve issues. Um, we would take that information back to the developers and it would be like, oh, it's a known issue or it's a bug fix, we'll gotta go ahead and fix that. But I don't think they really trusted the data that we gave those guys. Um, so I tried to develop a better relationship with those guys. Um, what we started to do in the beginning was uh, we took over uh, the deployments for these guys. Um, that was kind of the first step towards giving us a little bit of leeway with them. Um, that taking over the deployments, we worked with them, you know, on a weekly basis, deployed code, um, and uh, it started to build kind of a trust relationship. They realized that if they worked with us by supplying us release notes and things like that, we would go through those release notes and work with them to actually get the deployment into place. Um, App support and at IHS is really responsible for the stage and the production side of the house. Uh, we're not really in dev and test, and that's really their playground. Um, but I think that's kind of where the trust issues kind of came through. Um, there was a point in time where they got kind of closed out of everything. They had access to everything, and they went ahead and took that access away from these guys, and it kind of strained the relationship a little bit, so to speak. And forgive me guys, I'm going off my notes here. So if we go back to the, you know, the slide before that, essentially, and we're not there. So we, uh, we as app support, we're getting frustrated fixing issues over and over and over again, so to speak. Um, so our main support function being fix the issue, resolve the problem, to tackle it again when it comes around, we kind of wanted to shift that to Let's dig into the code, let's find out what's going on with the application, and let's uh, start resolving some problems. Um, takes kind of a firehouse to do that, not just a couple of smoke jumpers. Um, so we took that role, or I took that role, started building that relationship with the developers, and we kind of moved into a whole new era um, at IHS. So by doing that, we started building a brigade so to speak, a bunch of firefighters, uh, specialists, so to speak. Not just a smoke jumper to jump in, but a smoke jumper to jump in, 
resolve the outage that we're having or the issue that we're having, and then start digging into the code and things like that to um, start taking development back, good information, valid information, trustworthy information um, that they could build off, off of. So I guess I kind of like to put it as a proponent for change. I was a proponent for change. I kind of came in, um, saw some things that were going wrong, saw some things that we could improve, um, and started building towards that with the rest of the developers. Um, so what we decided to do from there was um, we gained a little bit of trust. Um, we went from uh, firefighting, fires being 10% contained, you know, to pretty much so about 75% contained in a short period of time. Um, giving them valid information and trustworthy information allowed us to build that relationship that they would trust us to start doing some more things for them. So we started thinking about different tools. Um, we initially were looking at Dynatrace. This was about this time last year. Um, we kind of pitted Dynatrace against AppDynamics. Um, when the Dynatrace guys came in, we, uh, it seemed like a decent product. It was a little bit too uh, hard to configure or too involved. We wanted something that was just a little bit easier um, out of the box. And uh, they weren't really offering us that, so AppDynamics came in. Um, and when AppDynamics came in, we actually built a, uh, a partnership with them instead of just a relationship with them. Um, you can get a vendor that can come in and tell you, we can do all these great things for you, but essentially, lots of them can't prove the, you know, they'll sell you a box of goods, but they can't prove what their product does. Um, that's kind of the issue that we had with Dynatrace at the time. We would ask them to build dashboards for us. They'd bring a sales engineer in. Um, he would sit with us in the meeting. We would tell him the requirements that we wanted. Uh, he'd start building the dashboard, and then he would kind of say, uh, well, I am just going to go home and do this, and I'll send it to you in the morning. Not really what we needed. Um, we needed to be able to have a product that was easy to use, easy to configure, and have that partnership with somebody to actually show us how to build the dashboards and get the information that we needed. So from there, um, AppDynamics came in um, right out of the box, essentially. You know, I was pretty impressed with the tools. Um, they offered us uh, the support services that we needed to, to install those. Essentially, we signed a deal on a Friday. And uh, by Monday, we had implemented, implemented AppDynamics into uh, one of our oil and um, gas applications. And essentially right out of the box we started seeing issues. And not only did we start seeing issues, but we started exposing development to it, and they started seeing issues right off the bat. So building that trust relationship between App Support and Dev was a heck of a lot easier with AppDynamics than it was just searching through code, you know, digging through code, sometimes take hours, days to dig through that code to find, a, find the root cause, where with AppD, within a few clicks, we could find exactly what was going on with their application and take that valid, worthy data to them and say, we've got a problem here, we need it fixed. Um, the great thing about it was it was just not the, between the development and app dynamics, but it was between some of the other um, core business lines at our company as well. Um, they started seeing the value in it as well. Um, the IOC essentially can see that a machine is having health issues. Um, it goes from red to green, you've got that visual proof for you know, your tier one people all the way up to your experienced developers to be able to grab that data, take it, work with it, resolve the issue. And uh, it really has benefited the company, you know, uh, company wide. Um, I mentioned the oil and gas application, but we actually implemented into our uh, auth authentication entitlements application as well, which is a huge, We've had issues with that since I essentially walked through the door there. Um, the, the thing about app or, uh, access control and entitlements is when it goes down, we get calls saying access control is down. Well, access control is multi-tiered. Every single one of our products ties into that for people to get their access as well as their entitlements to whatever subscription services that they, uh, they have subscribed to. 
So it's not necessarily access control that's down. It can be one of 15 other applications that are touching access control that can cause issues within there. And the key thing about that is that used to take us anywhere between, uh, you know, five or six hours to sometimes five or six days to figure out the root cause. Um, with app D, essentially, you pop, you know, you go into the dashboard there and you see everything that's touching it. As you see everything that's touching it, you get the whole view of what's going on and it, it generally isn't either access control that's the problem, it's one of our other products that is slowing down or having issues on the back end or creating issues that cause performance problems within what they consider to be access control. So, we started building that brigade. Um, and it's been a wonderful thing, to be quite honest with you. I've been there two years now. Um, before, when I walked in, it was kind of an oh crap moment. Um, painful, almost. Uh, nothing could really get done because we were too busy fighting reoccurring issues that could be fixed. We would take the information to them to get it fixed and it wouldn't be put into any kind of fix. So they're being on the, on the end of we want to enhance um, functionality and features for our customers, not dev not wanting to, I'm not saying wanting, not being willing to take a look at issues or fixing reoccurring issues. We wanted issues fixed. It really made it a lot easier to build that relationship with development, give them worthwhile data to come through with um, and go through and start putting into their release cycles on fixing some of the major problems that we had with our, our applications. So, with that visible proof, um, we had built this relationship with development to the point now where we're, we're in out of situations where we have the valid data right off the bat from App Dynamics to tell them that there's a piece of code wrong or they did a release and they can roll back, fix that issue, and bring it back in. Um, it's a lot smoother now than it used to be. It's more of a team effort than just individual efforts there. And uh, it, it's pretty amazing. So now that we have everybody um, on the same page, essentially, to uh, you know, fight these fires that come up, um, AppDynamics has been a core contributor to that. Um, I don't really have uh, anything but good things to say about AppD, essentially right out of the box. And then after configuring it, tuning it, and honing it with them being our partner, um, we have resources that come in to help us into the, even some of our more involved multi-tiered applications that we plug into access control or plug into other uh, tiers of our environment. Um, so from two years ago when I came in to now, it's a, a complete turnaround. Um, it's a completely different relationship between the two uh, environments. My boss, at, my big boss there at IHS likes to talk about uh, going from vertical to horizontal, talks about ecosystems and, and all of that. But we were throwing around this word DevOps when truly what we had over there was just a dev and an ops. We didn't have you know, a correlation between both. And we're striving to get to that point right now. We're striving to make those uh, changes between the two teams with the data that we get from AppDynamics to work towards the common good. And we're not quite there yet, but we're getting there. Um, key things are these bridges that are being built. Um, in the beginning, there were no bridges. Uh, we were swimming across the water all the time, um, trying to get those guys to understand that you know, their applications did have issues or we had some infrastructure issues that needed to be fixed, things like that. And uh, it was difficult. We built those bridges slowly, but we built them on a solid foundation. Um, by building that solid foundation with development, with the valid, you know, quality data that we get from AppDynamics, it's made it a lot, you know, more productive. We get uh, code tested before we actually deploy it within the test dev and stage environments. And uh, by the time we put it out to production, we're not seeing the same, or making the same mistakes, we're seeing the same problems that we used to see um, when I was there two years ago. Um, our time to resolve uh, was reduced by 72%, which, which is huge. Um, we 
along with that dynamics, when they came, came in, they did the, the business value assessment. Um, in the business value assessment, and I'm going to go back to this slide, but in the business value assessment, what we were looking at was, uh, you know, taking days to, to fix performance issues, um, root cause maybe 10% of the time. And when we brought that data back to the developers that we found by digging through logs and stuff like that, uh, it wasn't necessarily perceived as being valid um, or being a problem to them. Um, they didn't think at times that that was a, you know, yeah, it could be our code, but it might not be our code. It could be something upstream or downstream. Um, we were seeing that a lot. Um, and essentially, we're having ma major issues um, on an average of, you know, five per month to troubleshoot. Um, and once we, once we went through the troubleshooting process, we found that just what we're bringing back to him wasn't very well uh, received. Um, when AppD came in and did their business value assessment, um, they were projecting that we would get to root cause um, and be able to uh, reduce our uh, time to resolve by 65%, um, which would have been absolutely phenomenal for us from where we were at. 65% um, seems like you know, a, a really good number. Um, but when they actually went through, we actually found out um, after the fact that we actually improved it by 75%, and we're just ecstatic by that. Um, there aren't too many tools out there that I've seen. Dynatrace, uh, I don't think, would have come close to these numbers for us. Um, and some of the other products, the lower-lying products, will use like Datadog or, or you know, some of these lower level. We don't really dig into the core of the problem or the root of the problem um, tools. Uh, AppD came in and immediate impact right off, the, right out of the box. Um, it, it was shocking to see that we had reduced everything by 75%, and it really blew us away. Um, not only did it blow us away, but it blew the developers away too. Um, it's a great tool for our app, application support team to find and fix issues quickly, um, outages, things like that. Um, but what we found out was when we turned it over to the developers we were kind of talking about using it as a surgical tool. Um, we would buy 50 licenses, we would install those uh, into our most troublesome applications, and then pull them out once we resolve the problem and move them somewhere else. Um, we quickly found out after releasing, uh, or after giving the developers access to the, to the you know, product, that uh, they came back at us and said, if you pull it from our product, uh, we're going to kill you. <laughs> so they were uh, extremely impressed with it. Um, not only were they impressed with it, but we were expecting to use it as a tool to bridge that gap and to take it, take the uh, information that we got out of it, have vis visible valid proof that we could take back to development and say, see, it's a piece of code or this is your piece of code that's causing the problem, fix it. And it turned out to be so much more. Um, Develop now uses it um, prior to, I mean, all the way in. We've got a couple environments where we've got it actually in dev. For our ac access control guys, they've got it in dev and in test right now. And uh, they could really care less about the stage and production ones. Um, but they're using it to pre test, um, find their bug issues before we even put them out the door. Um, go even above and beyond that. The, the core of the information that they get back from the data that they receive when they're seeing things go wrong in their testing and development environments has allowed them to rethink the way that they're coding and take a look at different options and opportunities that they can to enhance those features and the functions that they primarily wanted to in the first place. So they've been thrilled with it. Um, amazing how uh, you know, a simple tool and a simple install can change the minds of a, an entire organization like we have here at IHS. Um, there really is no dev versus ops or ops versus dev anymore. We're actually pulling towards that dev ops. Um, it's been a phenomenal tool to bridge that gap.
I'm going to go back to this slide. These, we don't only hear it from development, we hear it from the business owners and the business leaders as well. Um, we hear about how they uh, are able to, to get a view into their application to see where their business units are actually uh, enhancing um, or gaining customers or where customers aren't so, you know, what their customers want, what their customers don't want is what we get from the business. Um, they can see the patterns um, within their application that allows them to uh, enhance it on the business side too. They can go back and sell to those customers by seeing what kind of traffic is flowing where. And it's, it's been amazing on that level too. We've had uh, exposed it to upper management as well. Um, my senior director doesn't, I guess when I came out here last year, when we were pitting Dynatrace against uh, Appy, we didn't really know what direction we were going in. Um, and Scott said, uh, actually I kind of snuck out here last year. I got an invite from Trace3, which is one of Appy's partners. Um, they asked me to uh, you know, come out, take a look. I got the chance to come out here and meet with you know, folks just like you and try to find uh, what's good and bad about App B. Um, I never really heard much bad about App B, but I was digging last year. So Dynatrace, I already knew it was pretty poor. Their functionality wasn't there that we wanted. It was too convoluted and too difficult to work with. Um, what I saw from App B was great. But coming out here last year and actually meeting with people who did the exact same thing we did, which was pit the two against each other, um, and hear their struggles and their frustrations with one or the other, um, it became immediately clear to me that the best tool for our money at IHS was App Dynamics, um, and it was uh, it, it was a fun experience last year. This one, this, yeah, I, I wanted to speak this year, um, and I'm sorry if I seem nervous, but. It's a big room with a lot of people in it. <laughs> I guess I wasn't really expecting this many people in here, but it's great to, to, to be able to sit up here and stand in front of you guys and really tell you about our experience there. Um, this is kind of a before, during, and, and after story is what I kind of want to portray here. Um, you know, before being very difficult to work with dev, prior to Appy, um, prior to implementing Appy, the, the middle part where we pitted them together, and then the final end result, which has just been um, amazing. So what we've learned. Um, after running through the exercise of pitting two different uh, APMs against each other, um, what we really learned, what it boils down to is that with a quality tool like AppDynamics, um, you can build trust relationships between really any division within your company. Um, I think it becomes a daily struggle for all companies uh, within dev and ops to actually work together to come to the common good, to, to resolve issues in a timely manner, fix code, you know, improve their functionality and do it all you know, as one group. Um, and what we learned after uh, you know, implementing AppD is that uh, it's, it's a quality product, a quality application that allows any organization to bind all the groups involved in making that application better. Um, this kind of gives you the uh, cross application view that we have out there right now. This is the main dashboard in. We can uh, kind of see from here, there's actually some interesting things going on here that a couple weeks ago when I pulled this up, I was kind of shocked to see. Um, if you can see there, there's uh, stage systems that are actually touching the production access control environment, which was kind of a shock to me. Um, if they're testing stuff in stage and it's hitting our production systems, how am I supposed to know uh, what's causing a problem? How does that impact my production environment? When I went back to the two different uh, divisions within, or two different development teams within the co a company and asked, you know, why do I have stage servers touching production? The answer was, one answer I got was, well, we're really not sure. And that concerned me a little bit. Um, I'm like, so you're really not sure? Um, okay, well, I'm not really sure either. So, you know, what are we doing with that? 
The second answer that I got was we didn't have enough, um, we didn't have enough infrastructure essentially to build a stage, a true stage in a true production environment. That one makes a little bit more sense to me, but the one about, I'm not sure, <laughs> was a big problem. Um, the dashboards that they provide um, actually work for different divisions within our company. I don't see Dev using the dashboards too much. I see Dev actually tracking down their business transactions and all of that from within the, uh, their main tiers and their main application dashboard. They're more interested in the business transactions and stuff like this, but App Support's very interested in the uh, <coughs> dashboards that can be built. Um, Dev's more concerned with uh, I.O., performance, all those kind of things. So they do have their own dashboards that they built for that. Um, but we can build dashboards that are as simple as, you know, allowing, I've got Ernie Gomez here, he's in our IOC. Um, he's the manager of our IOC. We're talking about <coughs> building dashboards out for his team that are as simple as, this is what the infrastructure looks like. We're green, we're red, you know, down from tier one. Um, and allowing them to have that look into it to be able to actually get the information that they need before they make a call to my team, which is the app support team. Um, and then on the app support team, we've got a whole different set of dashboards that allow us to see what um, business transactions are flowing through, um, how much uh, that's impacting the environment at the time. Um, and development using their dashboards is more towards that customer experience. So. Um, they want to see what their code is doing at what time and uh, what's hanging up. So the initial view in has been beneficial for all, you know, um, divisions within our company. Oops, sorry about that. So the other thing too is the multi-environment testing. Um, like I mentioned before, with access control being our main um, entryway in, in our main uh, entitlements service. Um, we have probably, right now, I think 12 or 13 applications that are actually within AppD that are showing us everything that's touching um, access control. Um, upstream, downstream, you know, all those issues are really, really exposed within App Dynamics to the point that if I look at my access control dashboard, and I see everything that it's touching, and I see ex you know, all the applications that are touching it at the time, I find out a good percentage of the time that it's not access control that's the problem. It's either the connects or the interdex or some of the other applications that we have in that are actually slowing the process down. Um, we're able to determine quickly uh, which application is having the issue, and we're able to actually take that and resolve that issue um, within seconds, sometimes minutes now. Um, effectively and efficiently, and then gather the data that we need to take back to either development or any one of the other teams, sysops, if it's an infrastructure issue, um, memory, Skyo, all that kind of stuff. We've got that information to take back to the appropriate team to fix the issue. And uh, like I said earlier, the uh, development teams are actually using it to test their code before they pop it out. Um, we do, I can't even remember. On an average month, I'm, we do about 15 to 20 deployments for the 535 applications that we have out there existing right now. In a perfect world, I'd like to have that be on all 535 applications. Um, but what we initially did was, when we pitted Dynatrace against uh, App Dynamics, we were looking at a bigger scale than we actually bought. We did kind of a try and buy. Um, but that try and buy, I would like to say, has been probably the best thing that we ever did. Um, it's allowed us to expose you know, all the issues within all the different tiers of the company, or whether it be infrastructure, development, app support, um, and allow us to expose those issues and fix those problems much quicker. So we're in round two right now of buying more licenses from AppD to install in some of our other environments. The top for us would be the top 25, um, that's a lot of licenses. <laughs> so, and budgets are a little bit tight right now. But it was the best decision that we ever made was to go with that beat. Um, I can't say enough about it just right out of the box. Um, working with that beat to, uh, to hone, you know, the installs 
to configure it to the point where we're getting the information that we need and the data that we need from them in order to take back to the appropriate teams and, and handle it. It's just been amazing. So this is a, essentially the slide that my uh, VP wanted me to throw in. Um, we talked about buying more, uh, more licenses and stuff like that. We are, we are, yeah, it's my little legal speech, so if they see this online and everything, Scott knows that I threw this in, Mike. Um, so by uh, 2016, we're looking um, you know, to, to essentially mature our use of AppBee. We're still kind of in our infancy right now. I don't think we have truly um, implemented it 100%. We're on a dedicated SaaS controller. We'd like to get on our own controller to enable some of the other functionality that you can get out of that. Um, we have not set it up to um, essentially do automatic restarts and all of that, which we're gonna get to. Um, <coughs> but the key thing is, is that we, we wanna implement it to get a deeper view into the rest of our applications and into the rest of what's going on within our environments so that we can, uh, you know, optimize code and optimize our applications to be the best that they can be. Um, throughout the whole speech, I've you know kept kind of emphasizing the fact that it's helped us to build this collaboration and build these bridges that can't be torn down for us to fight the common fight, um, the good fight. That is, we want to be the best that we can be. We want to be up, you know, twenty four seven. You can talk about seven nines and all that kind of stuff, but without a quality tool to do that, it can become quite difficult. Um, I can dig through log files for days and days and days and try to find a problem with you know, somebody's piece of code. Um, but if you've got the visible proof to show them right off the bat, it just speaks volumes. Um, it makes that uh, collaboration just a little bit easier because you're able to prove you know, what you're trying to prove, essentially. You've got the meat to back up, you know, your, uh, your argument. Um, and, <clears throat> excuse me, we, uh, we want to continue to build this relationship with AppD. Um, I, I think the interesting thing between AppDynamics and ourselves too is, I think we kind of gave, gave them an oh crap moment when they came into our environments too. Um, it's been off, it, we got a lot of complex very difficult applications out there that are doing one thing or another. Some of them are doing things they've been doing for 20 years, which nobody knows about anymore. So I don't even know if those development teams are still there, but those boxes are still up and running. Um, <coughs> to developing new applications uh, for customers or we're a company of acquisitions too. So we, we essentially, if we see an application or a company out there that has an application that can help us do our jobs better at IHS, or serve up one piece of data or another, we'll buy that company. Now, when we do the mergers and acquisitions, it's not always that easy. Um, we have these meetings about uh, merging them over to our platforms, bringing them over to our data centers, those kind of things. We still have some M&As out there, some companies that we bought um, that still have uh, a desktop running on some guy's desk that's serving up an application that nobody knows about. Um, but we hear about it at 3 o'clock in the morning when they call us to tell us it's down. Um, we're trying to get away from that. Um, with App Dynamics, it's been you know a lot easier. We're we're starting to kind of gain that ground um, to become truly horizontal as far as Dev and Ops and Sys Ops and everybody else is concerned. Um, the tool really allows us to uh, gain that valuable information that we need to make these things happen. So, and that's really all I got, guys. So I hope that. Uh, I hope that you were able to look past my nervousness and all of that and actually get something from this, but um, I'm more than willing to answer questions that you guys might have. I think I'm a little bit easier in that realm than I am actually doing the presentation. Go ahead. Yeah, um, it might actually turn into two or three questions. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, um, by the way, I thought you did a great job. Thank you. Uh, so, um, so the first thing, so you started your journey with App Dynamics about a year ago. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So 
we're about a, I want to say about a 65-35 split between .NET being the 65. Uh, Java being the other 35. We've got the machine agents. We've got database agents installed. We've got a few Apache agents out there. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, are you able, or if you are able to do it, to what extent are you able to do end user monitoring as well? So you can see the entire yeah. structure of the way the tiers interact with each other, yeah. databases, web servers, yeah. web servers, but the end user mm -hmm. is really what I think it is. Is it really there with that dynamics? It is really there with that dynamics. In fact, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't touch on that, but just because of the fact that we haven't really implemented it 100%, um, it's kind of in our infancy for IHS right now with the EUM. Um, but we did install EUM in our uh, oil and, and drilling uh, application that allowed us to uh, get that whole experience. We can see from the different regions all over the country of where we're at, uh, what the performance looks like, uh, what areas we're having hits in. Is it an infrastructure problem? You know, is it actually truly an application problem our, our end? Or is Penang having issues with, you know, any of their communications over there? Things like that. So it's, it's above and beyond. Uh, their end user monitoring is absolutely fantastic. So, and, and actually, to go into that just a little bit deeper, I know now after they announced uh, what they announced this morning that it's even going to get even more involved and more deeper on that level. So, but what we've used it for, it's been invaluable. So we've been able to, you know, track. So being the nature of IHS and serving up data, we get hacked, you know, all the time. We're getting hit by China, you know, we're getting hit by over in the Middle East and stuff like that. And we can actually use that EUM to find out that as well. So we're actually filtering IP addresses that come through. We can see if it's a DOS attack by seeing, you know, without having to get network involved, we've got it all right there. So. Thank you. You bet. So. Yes. Is designing their application? They, they're the designers, and repeat we're, the yeah. Repeat the, question. repeat the question, please. When you're setting up the monitoring portal, are you doing that in a dynamic, or are they involved in any way? Oh, the, the developers are directly involved. So um, that's the key part of the enablement services that they have, or the fact that they truly are a partner. They're not just a vendor that comes through and, you know, throws, throws your application at you and says, here's the install, go ahead and do it and, and figure it out. But as far as, uh, you know, that partnership with AppDynamics, it's absolutely fantastic. They, they held, uh, for instance, uh, the Interdeck folks, our energy folks. We spent a week, week and a half with them, going through all the different business transactions, um, trying to look at the data that was initially discovered and try to figure out what was important to them you know, what business transactions were valid and ones they wanted to look at and what ones they never had issues with. And we can just kind of, you know, sweep under the rug, so to speak. We don't have to look at those. But it was a direct relationship between App Dynamics, Dev, and App Support to get that done. So, yeah. Yes, sir? Yeah. Sure, we are too. <laughs> um, to be quite honest with you, the key thing for us was the fact that we signed the deal on a Friday, we implemented it on a Monday, and within that first week, we had enough data coming through that app, you know, the, the development side was like, okay, you're right. Um, you can't just slam it down their throat, right? I mean, it doesn't work that way. I think that's kind of what the internal struggle was at IHS, was that there was constantly a struggle of fix your stuff, we don't want to fix our stuff, we just want to offer up enhancements and you know, enable new services. Um, building the relationship between the two makes it a little bit easier with that, but it's always a sales pitch. You know? um, developers are kind of set in their ways. Um, They've been doing things, we've got some developers over at IHS that have been there 30 years, so they've been doing this for 30 years. It's all they know. It's their baby, it's their family. Um, by using Appy to show them the data's valid, 
that there are problems with their code. It was more of a, we exposed them to it and they ran with it. Um, but prior to that, there was a lot of time put in to build the trust between all the different departments anyway. Um, so Abby helps with it. There's always some salesmanship that goes along with it. But you meet with them, you show them the data, you show them the product that AppD delivers, and it really becomes almost a no-brainer. So they just kind of fall in. Our app teams fell right into it. So I heard a lot of, uh, let me get a drink of water. I heard a lot of, uh, it's not our code. You know, it's gotta be VMware. It's gotta be the network. It's the database. You can't really say that if you got a product that proves that it's not. Um, when we exposed it, when we enabled it, installed it, and exposed it to them, those conversations became a lot easier to do. It became almost a uh, thank you for offering us this. This makes it a lot easier to, and those arguments went away that it's something else besides code. So I don't know, developing that relationship is a little bit of schmoozing, uh, but it's a lot easier to schmooze when you got a product that actually does what AppD does that actually serves up the proof. So the data is valid. That's all it really has. So we can talk a little bit more if you want to after the fact. So anybody else? Well, thank you guys. I appreciate it.